Hey YouTubers and fellow Sedoers, welcome to episode 3 of the Game Boy Zero Handheld Edition Assembly Guide. In the last episode, we finished the backside of the Game Boy Zero Handheld Edition PCB. As you remember, we did TP4056, the, the JST, some of the buns, and the header row for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the front side. Uh, loads of buns, there's 10 in total. Uh, only one resistor and the coup de gras, the LCD screen. Let's go. All right, so before we get started tonight, I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough of all the parts that we're gonna be using for the front side of this PCB today. First of all, the most important part is, well, the LCD. This is a 2.8 inch TFT LCD, which features the, I9, the I9i 9341 18 pin. This is an SPI driven LCD. Um, some people say it's a little bit slow, but using the FBTFT libraries, we can get it up to pretty quick uh, frame rates. Like I mentioned, we also have buttons. And do we ever have a lot of buttons? You're gonna actually have four, which is your A, B, X, Y. You're gonna have four directionals for your D-pad, and you've got your start and select buttons as well. In addition to these pieces, you're gonna need one 2.7 ohm resistor. And this is the one that sits here, and it controls the brightness for the LCD. Now, you only need one of these. Next up, in order to prevent any shorts happening, you know, the back of the TFT is actually aluminum or it's a steel plate here, so sometimes when it touches bare pads on the PCB, not the best idea. We're gonna use some Kapton tape for the back of that and to make sure it sticks, some double-sided tape. In the last video, what we did is we took a little bit of a paintbrush, some liquid flux, and we slipply dabbed the pads that we're going to be soldering. Now what this helps is it's just an accelerant as I'm using a lead-free and rosin-free solder for this. You may be using a 6040 or a 3723, or sorry, it's a 6723. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult to work with, so we're just going to quickly, you know, uh, flux all those pads and really what that helps is you know just uh, accelerating the soldering process. We mentioned last time that the easiest way to do this is to pre-tin uh, some of the pads and just sliding that button in. If you need a review of that go back and watch episode two uh, but I'll just point them out here again. What you'll see on here are some of the uh, exposed pads have a little bit of uh, a notch those are connected to your ground plane. So you're gonna to wanna to tackle those first, do those, and then just slide your buttons in. I'm gonna do that straight away and just show you guys what I mean. So you're gonna tap that and just quickly, you know, add some solder to those pads. Uh, what we'll do next is, as I finish this, we're gonna go into a little bit of fast forward mode so I'm not boring you guys with doing all the buttons uh, up here and then we'll talk about the resistor and the LCD next. All right, well that's the buttons done. All 10 of them are now soldered in. Next one we're gonna do is this little 2.7 resist, ohm resistor here. Uh, and if you remember from episode two, what we typically do is we tin one of the two pads for the 0805 component, and then we simply heat that pad with the solder on it, slide the component in, and let go. And it's pretty much done. The only thing you've got left to do is just to tin this side over here, and you're good to go. Again, we are using the chisel tip on this, uh, which kind of works like a fountain pen, so it keeps uh, solder on the tip itself. So, you know, if you've got flux on there, it just kind of pulls it in and you don't need to constantly uh, keep soldering that up. On the back of the LCD, you've got these two adhesive strips and they help you stick it onto the circuit board. We don't really need them and they are gonna get in the way. So we'll just peel them off while we're at it. Now they are a little bit finicky at times, but we'll get them off. The next thing you'll notice now that we've got the adhesive tape off the back of the LCD are these little nipples in the corner. Now what those are for, those are meant to sink in as mounting positions or lock positions, similar to the way the power switch works on this. We don't really need them, so we're just gonna clip them off with a pair of cutters around the, the, the ribbon. Just be careful not to cut any of that ribbon. It is relatively fragile and we do need that in one piece. Cool, now it'll sit flush, but we still got a little bit of prep work to do. All right, now we've got the backside covered up with Kapton tape. What you'll probably just want to do is take a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife and just, you know, 
cut the remainder off. You can also wait until that's on the board to do that. It now we're gonna look at these 18 pins here and we're gonna just quickly tin them up lightly. So what you wanna do is the top one here, number one is actually the ground and that's probably the safest to hold your iron on for a little bit longer. Just hold it there, put some solder and just drag it down across. What you wanna do is kinda of just work it in there and make sure that you don't have any bridges, inspect them and you'll see it's just kinda of running like, 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 like a pen. Um, if you take a look a little bit closer, you'll see across the top, it's just little bubbles, but there's actually four in the middle that are connected together. And those are your LED one through LED four. Uh, don't worry if those are bridged, those are the lower four here. Uh, the one that you're gonna be worried about are the top ones. When you're dealing with fine pitch soldering, you know, one of the things that you can do here and a tip I, I typically use is just, you know, drag it across every few, uh, just to make sure you don't have that bridge going on there. The last thing you want is, you know, a connection between pins that aren't supposed to be connected. That looks nice and clean to me. Let's put the LCD on. Now, on the actual LCD is another piece of adhesive tape. This is going to go down against the board. You can go ahead and peel that one off now. Another tip that I can give you here is I typically use flux on both sides of these copper pads here, and it just really helps pull the solder right through. I don't know if you can see them really well, but there's tiny, tiny little holes. And what that does is it pulls that solder through the hole and up and onto the other surface. Now, before you set it down with any adhesive, you wanna make sure you line those pins up. I typically look at the first and the last one just to make sure they're nicely lined up. And there you go. We're just gonna hit that. And then we'll, top, we'll hit the top one here. So this is the ground with our soldering iron just to hold it in place. Make sure, you know, you still got a little bit of wiggle there. We'll take a look at that last pin and we'll put it there. We'll work on the other pins as we go along. All right, so we've got them nicely lined up and we're just gonna do what we did earlier and that's just pulling that soldering iron across the top of that ribbon until all of them have pulled through. You'll start to see the top of the copper connection turning silver from the solder. That's good. All right, now you've got that soldered up nicely. Before we finish off, we're just going to fold this over gently. We're still going to get back in here, put another strip of Kapton tape across the top to hold this ribbon down. And then we're going to put our double-sided adhesive tape here. But for now, we're just going to turn this and we're going to turn it over. One of the things you might be asking yourself is, did I solder it right? As you see right now, I've just got a socketed Raspberry Pi Zero that I use for all my testing. There's no SD card in it and we're going to turn the power off. And here we're just going to plug in our USB. As you see, we're getting power just the way we did yesterday with the test. And if you remember, the yellow, the red blinking light is because I've got no battery plugged in. There's my LCD, and I'm going to flick that switch. Now, the one thing you're going to want is a white screen. This, for now, means you've connected it properly. It's powered, and all of the LED light is working. The backlight is working. Uh, you know, and in the middle are the SCL and the SDA and the clock lines. We'll worry about those in a little bit. Well, we're pretty much done soldering for the night. But so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that last piece of Kapton tape on there. And that's really just to keep that strip down, even though there's a little adhesive strip on the underside. Last thing, you're gonna wanna take some 3M double-sided tape, and that's really to hold that screen down since we took the adhesive strips off the backside. No problem though. This stuff is pretty good. Uh, try not to push it down too hard when you're adhering it. I usually use tweezer to peel it off and we're just gonna line it up. Uh, I like to keep the protective film on the LCD until I'm completely done and I, you know, I've got the case on and then I'll just peel it off at the last thing. So when you're turning it on or you're running a Raspberry Pi uh, with, with the protective film on, it is a little bit blurry, it is a little bit darker, that's okay. All right, here it is, moment of the truth. So we've got this Raspberry Pi that I use for testing. It's got a female socket header on the bottom side of it. So I'm just gonna put that on our 40 pin header like so. You know, I like using this style even on my daily driver because I can squeeze the battery in between there. Uh, you'll see in the next episodes how we managed to do that there nice and clean. Uh, this is a 1200 MA battery. You can use a 1000, it'll fit really nice in behind that Raspberry Pi. Anyway. Point of the story is I've got my SD card here preloaded from one of my other Raspberry Pis. I'm gonna plug it in, 
make sure my power switch is off, plug in my USB and fire it up. So the first boot, typically you are gonna see that white screen and eventually that white screen is gonna turn to a black screen. I currently have my config and my boot and my command line running in silent mode, so I don't see that booter. Uh, but this is a place where you can add a splash screen, a splash movie, uh, anything like that. The first boot on any Raspberry Pi is typically between 20 to 30 seconds. And there you go. There's that Game Boy Zero handheld edition logo you wanted to see. Uh, again, all right. So as I mentioned earlier, I still got that film in there, uh, as you can see with the big black stripe. So, you know, that is something you're going to want to peel off later. I'm not done working with this one yet. We have a few more things to do. But we'll go through here, make sure all our buttons work. And right now, let's, uh, I don't know. Let's take out the old uh, Super Nintendo, shall we? Ah, so my A button isn't working, and as you can tell, I actually missed one pad. That is actually the pad itself that I'm gonna need to solder so I can use this button. Uh, across all these buttons, and this is actually a good point, if you do miss and it, you know some of the buttons aren't working with the pre-programmed image on our GitHub, uh, just double check your button. Even, even us pros make these mistakes. Guys, this is something I don't recommend, but I'm actually gonna hot solder while everything's plugged in. And there you go, you see my A button actually working. Pretty cool. Again, don't do this at home. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so we're in the Super Nintendo here, and we're gonna go to, oh God, let's, let's pick uh, Super Mario World. So we haven't done anything with the sound or the USB sound card yet, so it's going to be quiet, uh, as you can imagine. But here, we're just here to test out all these buttons, make sure they all work. All right, there's our screen. Start works, start works, start works. Great. Uh, down works, that's good. And as you remember, I uh, hot soldered that A button. Probably something you don't want to do. Uh, there you go. Everything's working nice. And we're dead. Cool. Guys, thank you so much. Look at the work that you've done today. We got a couple things to talk about for the next episode. Uh, so we're going to follow that through just at the end of this video. Oh yeah. And before I forget, what I do recommend, uh, you know, since, since we're working with a live device here, is go through Emulation Station's Quit menu. Uh, that's by hitting Start, bringing up the modal window, going to Quit. And simply at this time, just go shut down system. Yes, uh, it's gonna go through the remaining uh, command line here that you're gonna see. Once you get the white screen, you're safe to go. Just, just turn it off and pull out the plug and we'll talk about what's next. All right, so if you've been following me along, you guys have been making amazing progress. We got a few things we gotta decide next. Is, uh, are we gonna take that Raspberry Pi with a female header and mount it that way with the battery in the back. And that, that, that also gives us an opportunity, you know, if we want to mount that USB card, the USB sound card behind there, or do we flush mount this on the pin header? We can still slip the battery in behind and maybe move our USB sound card over here or just not bother with it and, you know, we'll use a dongle with it. Um, stay tuned to the next episode and uh, we'll, we'll figure this out. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think about what we should do in terms of mounting and the USB sound card. And we'll follow up in episode four. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us for episode three of the Game Boy Zero Handheld Assembly Guide. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick re recap. We managed to do the LCD, the front buttons, and the little resistor there. We tested it out, made sure it ran. Now what I need from you guys is comment down below what the best way to mount that Raspberry Pi is gonna be. Do we flush mount it, or do we put it with a female header and slip the USB uh, sound card underneath, or do we hardwire the USB sound card and attach it a little bit further down for your headphones? Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Keep watching. Let me know below what you think, how we should mount it. Have a good night.